Before I start today, there's a few notes that I'd like to make. The first is that if you are a beginner in Blender, then I highly recommend checking out Brady Johnston's series Blender for Biochemists, Intro to Blender, and Fundamentals of 3D if you are interested in visualizing proteins. This tutorial assumes some measure of familiarity with Blender, and it's just a condensed version of this, specifically using a different piece of software. That software is Avogadro, and if you've seen my video on how to use Blender to create any molecule and visualize any molecule that you want, this is an extension for proteins and uses the same software. Avogadro is free, so go ahead and download it, you'll need it for this tutorial. Another note that's absolutely worth making is that unlike most molecules which are a little bit smaller, proteins tend to be huge. And so if you're going to be working with any sizable protein, or dare I say even complex protein, you really want to make sure that you have a computer that has sufficient horsepower to do so. Now, the computer that I'm using is relatively decent, and it has specs that are linked in a separate video, but if you are actually going to model something substantial, make sure you have the horsepower to do it, otherwise you are going to lag a lot and crash even more so. Let's get started in Avogadro. I'm going to go to File, Import, and Fetch from PDB. If you're connected to the internet, you should be able to grab pretty much any PDB structure. I'm going to go with one CRN because I know that has an amount of geometry I'll be able to use using this machine. Once I hit enter, I'm just going to wait, and I should see something appear. If you don't see this box, don't worry about it. You probably still have the protein, even if nothing has appeared on the screen. The reason that you don't see it is some of these will not actually update unless you go ahead and change their settings. So to start, usually just hit ball and stick. That one tends to enable pretty easily. Now, if this is the actual look that you're after, you should go check out my tutorial on making any molecule because that actually shows a much better workflow for using this style of model. I'm assuming for proteins that you probably wanna work with a cartoon or a ribbon, and we're gonna look at both of those. So go ahead, come to the ribbon. You can see it's already enabled, but nothing's appeared. Click the wrench, and sometimes the settings won't work for this, but usually just click include nitrogens and then unclick it, and that'll bring you the actual ribbon structure. Many people like this structure, they find it quite pleasant to work with, and this was actually done on request based on someone asking for this specific type of structure, in this kind of look. Unfortunately, I have not found a way to export this ribbon nicely, but what you can do is actually export the cartoon. And so we're going to do the same thing now, coming to the settings for cartoon, and you can see, without even having to change them, or if I want to change them a little bit, I can actually enable the cartoon model. We're going to hide the ribbon. But you can see the idea already is actually, if you want to get that ribbon structure, you just modify the cartoon model until it looks pretty similar. If you actually wanted more of the cartoon structure that you might see from something like PyMole, or just generally in a lot of protein publications, just use the cartoon structure and then sort of adjust the settings until it's the way you want. Something like this would be pretty typical. To sort of view the, your model in Avogadro before exporting it, very simply, left click to rotate around, when you have the toggle enabled for navigation, middle mouse to sort of zoom in and out, you can either click or scroll, and then right click to pan up and around. The only thing that you really want to avoid when you're changing the settings for the cartoon model is don't create any sections that are paper thin. That might cause some trouble when you actually export to Blender. But otherwise, this is pretty good, and we're now ready to export this model and go to Blender. The way that we're going to do that is come to File, Export, and we're gonna choose VRML. So go ahead, click that, and it's going to bring up this ridiculously huge window that actually stretches off my screen. If I bring it over here, you can see this is what I've got. Don't worry too much about any of these things. All you really need to do is select a directory where you're going to save this. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the appropriate folder. We'll call this what it is, 1CRN. We'll save that, and we'll hit render. And it's not really going to look like anything's happened, but you should have the structure now. So we'll go ahead, close out of this, and we're going to move over to Blender now. Now that we're in Blender, we're going to go ahead, grab the default cube, hit X, and delete it. From there, we're going to go to File, Import, and we're going to import this .wrl. That is the file extension. There it is. And just simply open the file. You don't need to worry about any of these settings, so go ahead and import. Once you've waited a few seconds, you're going to be greeted with your protein structure and also this camera that it added. Go ahead, grab that, hit X, and delete it. We don't need it. From there, you're going to want to grab this protein structure, tab into edit mode, and then you'll see all these triangles. We're gonna start by hitting M and we're gonna merge by distance. And you can see that's actually removed quite a large number of vertices because each of these were independent panels. To show you what I mean by that, I'll control Z to undo that. And if I hit three to grab a face, I can grab any individual face. And then if I moved it, you see this is actually hollow. We don't want that. So again, one for vertex selection, A to select everything, M and merge by distance. 
the next thing we're going to do is convert all of these triangles to quads. And that just usually makes for slightly better shading, but it's also going to be easier to work with later on. So I'm going to hit F3 for operator search, and you can see I've already loaded it up. Tries to quads, simply hit enter. Everything has changed into nice rectangles now. And this leads us to our last little problem. If you look very closely, you'll see there are unusual little seams in here. And that is just because of how Avogadro actually constructs this model. So if we tab into edit mode, alt -A, you can see, alt -A deselect everything. You can see there are areas of higher vert density. That's what we want to get rid of. And we want to kind of merge everything nicely so that it's continuous. The way we're going to do that, very easy. Tab back into object mode, come to the modifier properties, and we're going to start by adding a subdivision surface modifier. And then just one is going to be fine, so don't worry about going higher than that. And then we're going to add a weld modifier. And that is actually going to make sure all of those seams are filled nicely. From here, simply apply all of these. So if you don't have the modifier tools add-on enabled, you will not have this apply all. In that case, just simply apply each of the modifiers in order. Right click, shade smooth, and now we have our nice protein structure. From here, what we want to do is tab into edit mode, and we're going to get rid of some of this geometry. It's a lot to handle, especially if you have a much bigger protein. So go to edge and unsubdivide. Make sure you have everything selected. You may want to do this twice, but I find once is usually sufficient. Now you have a much smaller model to work with. If you notice that it doesn't quite look as smooth as you want, that's no problem. We're just going to add a subdivision surface back in. The reason we want to use this workflow is that it lets us turn it on or off. So in the final product, when we render, we can have the nice smooth protein, but if we're working with the model in the scene and it's slowing down your computer, you can disable it in the viewport and then it's a lot easier to work with. We've now solved many of the problems with little edges and stuff, but the last one that I want to talk about is these little areas right here. So if I go ahead and tab into edit mode, alt a deselect everything, hit two for edge select right there. And then I'm simply going to hold down alt and click this little ring. There are others and you may have proteins with multiple chains. In that case, what you actually want to do is just hit Shift G and choose Amount of Faces Around an Edge. That has now given me every instance like this specifically, and I can hit F to fill those. There is one other thing I'd like to do, which is bevel this, but first, I have to make sure that the scale is set to 1 for this. So if I hit N, tab into object mode, I can see the scale is 1. It may or may not be if you've already scaled this, so make sure the scale is at 1. If it's not, simply Control A and apply scale. Then tap back into edit mode, control B to bevel, and just hold down shift and drag out a little bit until you have a smooth edge. Something like that is going to be fine. Now we have nice end caps as well. And if we apply our subdivision, you could see everything looks smooth. This is a pretty well finished protein. And from here, you could go ahead and shade. One thing worth noting is that because this imported with the camera at the same time, its origin point is not in the center of the protein. If I hit scale, you can see it's actually scaling away from the origin at the center. I'm going to just adjust that by right clicking, setting origin and choosing origin to geometry. It's now in the middle. And from there, I'll hit Alt G to put it back to the 3D cursor in the center of the scene. And I can hit S and roughly about 0.1 to scale it in. So if I zoom in, you can see this is now my protein and my scale is small. So I'm gonna go ahead, control A and apply that scale. Now, if you had multiple protein chains, so let's say there are two of these in one object, which can happen quite a lot in proteins, I'll tab into edit mode, A to select everything, shift D, and then move this over. So this is not an actual protein, but hypothetically, if you imported one, I think there's one 52SZ, something like that, it would have two chains like this. And I want to address this just for materials. So when you go ahead and actually decide how you want to shade this, come to material properties, add a new material. This will be a principled BSDF. Very simple here, all we're gonna do is hit Z, come to material preview, and I'm not gonna go into details about the shading here, but you can just add a specific color. And the reason I wanted to show it this way is that if I want this chain to be a different color, I can tab into edit mode, and assuming I didn't have anything selected, hover over the chain that you wanna modify, and then just hit L. Because they are two separate objects in the same actual mesh, you'll be able to manipulate them differently with L and grab a different material. So I'm going to add a material now, I'll make this one red, and then I'll simply hit assign. And now you can see, tabbing back in object mode, I have my red chain, my blue chain. I can change all the material settings specifically, so I can make this one metallic and shiny. I can make the blue one just sort of plastic and shiny. And all of these settings would be readily available. From here on out, it would just be rendering, setting up cameras and lighting the way that you like. 
I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but hopefully that is giving you a sense of how you can use Avogadro and Blender quickly to set up pretty well any protein structure in addition to any molecule and any crystal structure, both of those tutorials linked in the description. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, you have yourself a great old day.